Hey everyone, welcome back to the Goff House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny and today it's Sunday. I'm getting a little bit of a late start. Sunday is family day. I was going to film this yesterday, but ended up shopping all day. So uh, with my um, daughter <laughs> and her girlfriend, we went to quilt stores and shopping for sewing machines and like, you know, my favorite shopping ever. So anyway. So here we are, it's Sunday night, and I'm gonna film this quick sewing tutorial for you. I am going to show you how to make bowl cozies. <laughs> They're so cute, super useful. These make excellent gifts. I'll tell you what, years ago, my mom made this one for me. And this one is made with a, I'm assuming she used about a 10 inch a 10 inch square on hers so 10 inch square and then she must have done a half inch cinch on the sides here so when you do a half inch cinch on the side it kind of leaves it a little bit more wide so if you've got wider flatter bowls at your house that you like to use then a half inch cinch would be great for this I do have some wider bowls as well and they fit perfectly in this and then this is the one I just made for my husband. And of course it's got cute little wiener dogs cause we are a wiener dog family here. <laughs> and Amy throw in a couple chihuahuas too. Anyway, so this one is, um, I did about an inch cinch up. So it kind of cinches a little bit more good for these kind of bowls. They fit perfectly, but I'll tell you what, you can microwave these if you make sure that your fabric is 100% cotton but I have seen them catch on fire, so I never do that if you're going to microwave soup. Um, and generally, we don't microwave a lot of soup. But when you make, when we make soup in the evening, I leave the pot on the, on the stove and we dip it up from there. And then we walk to the table with our bowls. And your bowls are hot and you're always using a kitchen towel and then everybody's got to have a kitchen towel to go to the table. These are perfect and they are reversible. So this can be the outside or this can be the outside however you want them to be and I'll tell you what it saves your hands from the burn or in the summer if you're eating ice cream same thing the bowls get cold these things I love them um, these make great birthday gifts Christmas gifts stocking stuffers <laughs> they're awesome anyway I've probably got a lot more to make but we're starting here Here's my husband's bowl cozy. Anywho, I'm gonna show you how to do it, so let's get started. Things you are going to need for this project. You're gonna need two pieces of nine inch squares batting. And you're gonna need two nine inch square fabric. Now, the other one I did two solids. This one I sewed four together, just to give it a little bit different look. So you can sew squares together, you can sew strips together, and then cut it into a nine inch square. And I had some of these just laying around um, so from a different project. These were um, quilting squares that were already cut. So um, I used the ones I had left out of here. And you can also use, I brought these over here to show you, um, smaller squares. So if you've got smaller squares, um, the project I did, I cut these into four and that's what these are left. So you could do a whole bunch of them and then, and then cut your, and then cut your square into nine inches. However you want to do it. You're going to need a cutting mat. Um, a rotary cutter, scissors. Uh, if you don't have a rotary cutter or cutting mat, it doesn't matter. You can just use scissors. Um, you're going to need a marker. This one is, um, as soon as it's heat erasable, so as soon as I hit it with an iron, it goes away. You don't have to have it because you're going to mark on the batting. You can just use um, a marker that won't show through the fabric. And then I use some quilt basting spray. Again, this is something that you don't have to have, but it's kind of nice. And then you're going to need some pins or wonder clips, whatever you want to use. And then something to poke out the edges. This is the clover hair marker. I love this one, but I also have a chopstick, a drumstick, whatever you want to use. A purple thing, 
This also helps. So anywho, I've got any possible thing you can think of here. Anything just to poke out the corners. You'll have to excuse the mess. I'm messy. First thing I want to do is put my batting here. I want to put one of my squares on my batting. This is a super easy project and when you see how easy it is, if you're a beginner sewer, this is perfect for you. Perfect for gift making. You're going to love this. Make sure it's on there good. And you can just pin this. You don't if you don't have if you don't have quilt basting spray, but it just kind of holds it in place for a few. And when you spray, spray the batting. Next thing we're going to do, flip it over. You'll need a ruler. If you just have a regular wooden ruler, you can totally use that. Um, but we want to measure. Actually, I'm going to get my bigger one. Seems like overkill for this, I know. <laughs> but I want to make sure I have it there perfectly. If, if you're... Uh, line isn't perfect it's fine so we're gonna draw a line triangle to triangle same thing on this side and everything I use right here um, I will try to find it and link it in the description box below so this whole kind of setup I use um, when I'm quilting, I like to just sit here with this little cut and press mat and my tiny iron and I just do it all right here so I don't have to keep getting up. Okay, I'm going to show you on this one, but we're going to do it on both. Bring this to the sewing machine. I'm going to take this and I'm going to sew on my line corner to corner. And little tiny fabric, little tiny thread scissors make it easy to snip the little threads. Otherwise, you can use your cutter. Here's the next step. And by the way, I have one comment on these, um, th this brand of fabric pens. Um, they come in a box like this, and they are called Love Sew. Oops, see if you can see them. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll try to find these and link them in the description box below. Um, there's, there's several and they, I'll show you how they come. And no, this isn't anybody telling me to, to sell this or not sponsored, but um, they come, the pens are empty and then they have the little um, ink re refills. I just want to say about these is I absolutely love them. These are the best pens for writing on fabric. Not all quilting um, heat erasable markers are created equal this writes on batting so well and a lot of them do not so I love this brand for that and my mom actually bought me these I have several brands floating around here and a lot of times on fabric I'll just use the white pencil and then you kind of have to brush it away but um, <laughs> these things are the best love them they write on this so easy
Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to fold this in half. And I need my small ruler. Make sure that your, your edges are matching up. Okay, so we folded this so our edges are matching up. You want to take your ruler, and we are going to go two inches from the top and one inch over. Hopefully you can see this okay. I'm going to put my my ruler just on the corner. So two, two inches down. Got my fabric marker. And mark here. I'm going to mark here. And then... Match the two up and mark those. Same thing with this one. Then, I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to do the same thing. If you can see the marks I made, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine, and I'm going to start sewing from the inside out on this first mark. And I'm going to do the, the second time on this one and then refold it and do these other marks. Okay, so starting from the inside out. And then, some people wait till the end to cut all the fours off. I don't like to. I like to cut them off now. You want to give about a quarter inch away. Turn, refold. And then there's our mark. Okay, and there is our first part of the fabric bowl, right there. I'm gonna do the next one and I'll be right back. I have both of the pieces done now. Um, I did wanna add one comment about the side edge when you're sewing and measuring and you're using this to measure. Make sure it's two inches down, not two inches this way because if you do it this way, it, it won't work. Um, so it needs to be two inches this way. Also, I want to um, state that I have it measured at an inch over. If you want it flatter, only do a half inch. If you need a bowl cozy that's going to be a little bit wider and flatter for your flatter bowls, only do a half inch. Um, but if you have bowls that are more tulip, you know, bowls, then it's an inch. Okay? But after you make them, you'll notice. So we have our two, our two sides right here. And I'm going to flip this one and press out my little sides there. That is going to be so cute. <laughs> but I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put it right into here. This is the hardest part of the whole deal here. And it's not that hard. <laughs> I'm just going to put these together and I want to um, 
find where my seams are and put my seams together first. And I'm just going to put a little pin in here. Actually, I'll do, the, do it this way. It's a little easier. Put my pin in here for my seams. Match these seams up. A little pin in my seam. Make sure everything's matching up well. Move this down. And in my seam. Make sure those seams are measuring up. Okay, now if you want, after you've done this part, you can take wonder clips and um, put them around the edges to hold them still and make sure that they um, all stay, stay measured up. And I kind of look at it and try to measure up, not more the batting, but where the fabrics are. And then you're going to want to leave an opening at some point. I do it right um, as I'm finishing it up. And I think I will put this one here. Make sure those are evened up. And right here, my batting's a little bit longer. I'm going to cut it just so I can see my fabrics. Makes a difference. Okay, and that's where I'm going to start is along this edge here. I'm going to start here. I'm going to sew around the whole bowl. When before I get back to where I started, I'm going to leave an opening just after this seam about to here. I want to make sure that my corner is, um, my corner is already sewn and I sew just past this, this seam right here. And I'll leave that opening to turn it inside out. You need at least two inches, otherwise it's really difficult to turn this right side out. And we're going to give it a quarter inch seam allowance. getting to the end piece so I am going to sew just over I'll take my pin out um, just over my seam right here so you can see it I'm going to take my wonder clip off and I stopped here just over my seam so I'm going to start right here. Okay, next step important also. So here's our fabric bowl. On the edges, right where all of our seams are, we want to clip just around, not into the stitching, but just along the outside. And I give three little cuts. That way, when we turn it right side out, we'll be able to um, have our creases there without so much bulk. And I couldn't see how far the stitching was. It took me a couple times. 
Okay. And then you can go through and cut off your points. Just don't cut into your stitching. It just relieves some of the bulk. Okay. And then we go back and find our opening and this is going to take some time um, to pull it through. Getting it started is the hard part. After that, it's easy. And now that we've got it pulled through, this is where I take the hair marker, stick it in there, and poke these out. And I forgot to show you. I was going to show you how to do a rounded version. I forgot. That's okay. You can, if you wanted to round these as instead of doing points, when it's inside out, you can go, and before you sew it, you go ahead and trim it. <laughs> rounded. And it looks like a cute little flower, but I was going to do that with this one, then I forgot. It's okay. No big. Okay, now we've got it all, all folded right side out. Next thing I'm going to do is take this over to my ironing board, and I'm going to iron all of this. And the little opening, I'm just going to iron so that it has a crease so we can sew it. So I'm going to iron this real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, last step. I've got this ironed. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a, stop, a top stitch around the whole thing as close to the edge as I can get. Um, where is my opening? Here's my opening. Tiny little spot right here. Um, I've gone ahead and ironed it. You can put a clip there if you want. I start right here so I close up my edge first. So I'm going to go ahead and put my top stitch right around here. Okay, here's my start and stop. Make sure I get all my threads off. Stuck in my nail. <laughs> and there you go. The cutest little bowl cozy. Oh my goodness. And you can kind of see my stitching around the edges. All right, so here we are, cute little bowl cozy. So cute. Everybody in your family is going to want one. So get sewing. <laughs> anyway, folks, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes at JennyGoff.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.